So here's an example of something that you can do. Once you've got somebody adapted going into the hypnotic state, once you've established their rapport with you so they're willing to talk to you, and once you've established their ability to go inward and to their imagination and you've helped them to develop their ability to let their subconscious mind create imagery, then what you can do is you can leverage the connection between what's created and what it represents and you can manipulate the imagery and in so doing manipulate the reality that they represent. So let me give you an example um, of something you can do with something like that. Uh, you can, for example, say, all right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go into your house in your mind and I want you to find a bookshelf and on that bookshelf I want you to find a photo album. And in this photo album is basically the story of your life in picture, pictures. And I want you to go through and find a picture that when you look at it, it makes you feel bad. Now it's okay if you don't actually see all the pictures like you're watching a movie. It's okay. Just flip through the pictures and if you find one that when you turn the page and you look at it, even if you don't Ident maybe, you, maybe you'll recognize the picture immediately, maybe you won't, but you'll get a feeling. When you have that feeling of something negative, stop there and look at that picture and try to understand what you're seeing. What does it remind you of? What is it a memory of? What event was it in your past? Once you've got that, let me know. And then, what I want you to do is I want you to pull out that picture and I want you to look at the back and what you're going to see there is a word or a phrase I want you to tell me what that phrase is, okay? Once you've identified what that phrase is, here's what I want you to notice. I want you to notice that that word is not actually written on the back of the page. It is printed on one of those little plastic Klingon things. And so if you pick at the edges, you can pull it off, and off it comes. And so it's flopping and hanging. And so you have this picture, this memory, of the past and then you have this emotion because the phrase is almost always an emotion and the two are separate now they were connected now they're separate and if you don't like this emotion if you don't want this emotion you can get rid of it you can find a, a fireplace or a lighter or uh, whatever you know, a trash can I like the fireplace because it's so cool I'm a little bit of a pyro but you can take this imaginary piece of plastic and you can throw it in the fire and you can watch as it crinkles up and curls up and, and, and lights on fire and little bits and pieces go flying up and, and basically the word is destroyed. Okay? And that act, even done as just it's an imaginary experience, right? But you know what? The act of separating the emotion from the memory really does separate the two so you can treat them individually and then you take that and you burn it the emotion is gone then you say okay i'm going to take a sharpie and i'm going to write a new thing so you turn it over and you look at the picture and you think about what happened there and what i mean you know prior to this exercise chances are if you'd have thought if you'd asked the person to think about that moment in time. The only emotion they would have come up with is the one that was printed on the back. But now that they've gotten rid of that, you can ask them, well, what do you think about now? What else was there about that scene? And they can probably come up with something. And you say, what was the best thing, the best aspect of that scene? Oh, well, it was this, you know, like, um, you know, the love and camaraderie that we had, or whatever. Um, and you say, great, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn the picture back over and I want you to take a sharpie and I want you to write that. Okay, now it's written on it. It's not separable. So the two are together. And then you put it back in there. Okay, and you can do that as many times as you want. The problem is if you have hundreds of memories, naturally that's going to be a lengthy process. So there's a shortcut. Once you've done that two, maybe three times, then you can take a shortcut and you can say, okay, here's what I want to do. I want to look at the book and I want to create an intention and this is what I want you to do is say to yourself I'm looking at the book and I'm I know that there's some positive 
memories in here and I know that there's some negative memories in here and I'm willing I'm causing through intention that all of the negative memories the little piece of plastic would come loose from their pictures and I'm going to take that photo album and hold it by the spine I'm going to shake it until every last one of those negative emotions has come dislodged from its respective picture and come falling out and I'm going to create a pile of them on the floor and I'm just going to keep going until they stop and when the last one falls and when intuitively I know that the last negative emotion has come out then I'm going to set down the photo album and I'm going to pick up and I'm going to get rid of all of those emotions and then I can get rid of them and then I've got this photo album and this photo album is filled with memories and none of them hurt anymore. And so it's possible then to review the past in peace. That's an example of something you can do with the people that you know. Just to see. Yeah, just to, to affect a little bit of help with them.